Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. I guess I hope everyone's having a good time at the conference. Um, this is the Q and A with the commenters panel. Appium commenters. Since it's the Q and A panel, uh, the way we will start is uh, I'll just ask everyone to introduce themselves, or we'll get started with some icebreaker sort of a thing, and I'll have a few questions just to get the ball rolling. And I request the audience. We have a you can see a question and an answer uh, section below. So please click on it and ask your questions because this is all about that. Ask as many questions as you feel. And I think pretty much whatever you like, I think this is your point. Uh, this is your chance to ask the committers whatever you would like. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be happy to answer that. So please do that. We'll make sure we cover all of those. Um, if not, then I think everyone will have to take care or answer the boring questions that I have planned uh, for today. But that's what it is. So yeah, let's get started. Um, I think I will request everyone to introduce themselves. But I think a little with a little twist, I guess this group has worked with each other for a sufficient amount of time that everyone knows each other a little bit. So how about we do introductions, but you introduce someone else, right? I'll take it up. Uh, probably I'll introduce Jonathan. So uh, Jonathan, uh, he's been working with the uh, Appium community for a very long time. And uh, I think he's, he's also one of the pillars for us to run this entire game of Appium 1 to 2 migration. Uh, and uh, currently, he, he was with Headpin. Now, Jonathan is moved to uh, PlayStation, which is Sony. Right, Jonathan? This is exciting, new, new stuff. And uh, I see really cool stuff about plugins and he's very passionate about Appium. So anything we go forward for Appium, uh, he's always there to hear out. Uh, yeah, and that's about Jonathan. Nice. Well done. Very accurate. Uh, Very accurate. So I'll, I'll, I'll go next. Uh, I'll introduce Edgars. Um, so I don't know too much about him, but I know that he's from Latvia, uh, not Lithuania, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> I made, I, I made a, a fool of myself earlier this morning uh, by making that mistake. But um, Edgars is one of my favorite people um, because, you know, for many years, we were working on Appium Inspector with very few people. And uh, at one point, I think I was the only person who was working on it, and that wasn't saying very much. And then Edgars came along and started making some very small contributions and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now he's running the entire project, basically, um, for the inspector. And the inspector is such an important uh, part of our ecosystem and is one of the primary ways that people kind of consume all the tools that we build. Um, so it's been really fun to see Edgar's step into a very important role on the team and uh, even begin to to spread into other areas as well. So, um, uh, you know, that's what I know about Edgar's and I'm very, very happy that he's with us. <laughs> All right, I guess I will continue. Uh, thank you for the kind words, uh, Jonathan. Uh, so uh, uh, as you said, I haven't been here for a long time, so I don't actually uh, know most of you, but uh, that well, at least. So, but I will uh, try to introduce Kazu since we've talked before. Uh, so uh, I know Kazu is one of the oldest uh, members of the core committers team, and uh, he's uh, commonly like, as I, as I see, like different issues pop up for uh, different parts of the Appian project. And uh, he's almost always there just uh, willing to help out both, uh, for example, with the XUI test uh, driver or the UI automator driver, just like things that most people maybe don't even see. And he's still working there uh, behind the scenes. So oh, it's definitely great that we have uh, people who help out with all that. So uh, yeah, that's as much as I know for now. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Edgar. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Kazaki, but please call me Kazu. And I've been, maybe I'm one of the oldest uh, maintainers and the uh, oldest is the Johnson Artwood, of course. And the uh, next is probably Micro in this uh, group. So let me introduce Micro. He's uh, in uh, Britain, hmm? no, uh, Germany right now. So, and he is the uh, one of the oldest and probably he started working on uh, 2060 or 17, I guess. I'm, 
I don't I I can't remember correctly, but he's very long one one of the longest maintainer and very passionate to maintain almost everything in the RPM project. So like our uh, WDA, which is for iOS, which require Objective C or private API or more deeper knowledge to uh, implement more uh, stuff to make iOS automation work. Or Android is require more Android internal something. And he is also very uh, keen to learn Android internal and implement and some uh, provide a solution for users. So I'm very appreciate to make, keep maintaining their, not only for JavaScript or Node.js stuff, but also deep learning iOS, Android internal, or sometimes Windows as well. So very appreciate to maintain, keep maintaining that. Thank you, Michael. I would like to introduce uh, Srinivasan Sekar. Um, he was also with the project for a pretty long time. Actually, I met him for the first time when we were working on Java client, a PM Java client. And uh, I think like we were like very productive there for like long time, like since many years. And I think there is still like a lot to do there. So I really appreciate um, actually you and Sai's uh, commitment to this project how many you did, and I hope that how many we will do in the future for that one. And also I appreciate your commitment from like the perspective of Appium plugins and other drivers, like for example, the Flutter integration driver or the device farm plugin, and also many other projects that are in the Appium user land, but they are not kind of part of the core project. This is really helpful. This really makes the difference and really helps people to work with that and to extend their automation to make it more effective. Yeah, thank you for that. Thanks, Mikola. Yeah, maybe I will introduce Sai. Uh, Sai and myself have been working together for the last nine years. In fact, we introduced uh, each other on uh, uh, GitHub, again on Appium. Uh, when we doesn't know each other. And then uh, it's been a little over nine years probably that we have been working together on uh, Appium. Um, yeah, uh, the learnings are amazing always. Uh, the commitment and the push that he uh, does uh, to contribute, uh, that's really great. And the ideas that he brings to table, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Me. Thank you guys for the introduction. I really liked how detailed everyone was in terms of what work they've done, how amazingly well they've contributed to uh, this project. And I think that brings me to my next question is to how did your open source journey start? Right? Did it start with Appium? Did it start with a different project? And more importantly, what keeps you going? And I understand that everyone had pretty much has a paid job, a day job. So a lot of folks here are volunteering their time to contribute to keep this project up and running. Uh, and I understand how difficult that gets. And it, sometimes it's also overwhelming, right? Um, yeah, so how did the journey start and what still keeps you going? Maybe I can go first. I think around 10, 11 years back, uh, probably a little more than that. Uh, my journey started with uh, change. It's a very minor change of... Uh, changing the node version in Travis YAML. I don't know how many people remember Travis product. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's again on Appium and uh, that's how my journey has started by changing the node version in a small Travis YAML. Again, with the help of uh, Isaac. Isaac was one of our co-contributors sometime back. and mm -hmm. He was the one who helped me to start there. And then, uh, yeah, it started there and then as a user, I was, when I was a user, I think we didn't even release 1.0 around that time. I think it was 0.6 or something on Appium. So it started on Appium as a user, then moved on to contribute to uh, several other repositories, uh, predominantly on Java client uh, from a user, then to a member. Then uh, me and I, uh, me and Sai had a chat to, uh, since we have Selenium Conf, how about uh getting something on the lines of appium so uh, appium conf then uh, naresh came in 
uh, helped us to do the Appium Conf. So I think I've played different roles, user, member, contributor, yeah, quite a few. And the, I think the learnings were amazing. Uh, learnings from the group uh, is what keeps me going always and uh, always very supportive, uh, irrespective of whichever time zones that we are in. Uh, we always get the enough support that we need uh, to keep going on the uh, contributions front. Yeah. Maybe I'll piggyback on what's So my journey really didn't start with Appium as a contributor. My journey started uh, with a project even before Selenium was called JBA. I don't know how many of you know that JBA for BDD. Back, I think this was like 14 years back. And it was open source. Uh, that's where I started off. Then Selenium came. So I was only user of the open source tool like anyone else. But I was not really a contributor at that point in time. But uh, something really, you know, fascinated me about this entire open source contribution towards this, you know, how something is there for free. Yeah. But there are so many people working hard to get things done right. And uh, I really felt amazed about it. And I thought, why can't I be a part of the journey and uh, see what help I can do? So my journey started as a, a user to these. And then I started becoming, uh, you know, uh, not even a, a contributor in terms of pushing code or even not even documentation, right? Come and look at issues and see if people need any issues. I can probably, you know, share my knowledge there. And from there, you know, it came, Appium came. Then I became a, uh, you know, um, someone who can help in that forum documentation then became a, a committer. But one thing I can say, Puja, something is really keeping me going even today in this open source is the people, I would say, because we get to meet you know, very good people in this. I get to learn from him, right? Every pull request I look, I stare at in this open source world, let it be any repository, right? Not to name this or that. Any repository I go, I look at some pull requests. There's definitely a learning for me from those pull requests, different perspectives, how it's looked at it, different learnings in it, right? So uh, that's, that's something which is really keeping me going to, you know, keep contributing to o OSS also. Nice. And I think I can resonate with that. Oh. I think it's the people that matters. It's the team that yeah. keeps you going. And I'm glad you feel that way about this bunch as well. I think my journey with open source began when I joined Sauce Labs in, um, I guess it was 2012. Uh, so yeah, over 12 years ago now. And Sauce Labs was, and I think still is, a very open source focused company in many ways. And um, even before Appium came around, I remember creating a few open source projects to help with uh, the Selenium ecosystem. Um, I think I wrote a, a Selenium PHP client and like an installer to help get Selenium and stuff set up on Windows because for some reason that was a tricky thing at the time for people using the PHP ecosystem. Um, in fact, I think the first like meetup talk I gave or second or something at, at Sauce Labs was for the Orange County PHP user group or something like that. So it's it's kind of wild to think that back when we started this Appium journey around that time, like PHP was still a, a target language for, for test automation. Uh, I don't think we see that <laughs> anymore. Um, but while we were talking, I went back out of curiosity and looked at when the first commit for Appium was, and it was um, January, 2013. So we're, you know, in a few months, it'll be 12 years of Appium. And one of the interesting things about how it started, I don't know if, if folks know this history, but um, Appium had a, a bit of an interesting uh, incubation at Sauce Labs where um, the initial idea behind uh, kind of a new way of doing iOS app automation uh, was developed by Dan Cuellar, who's been involved with this uh, conference. And uh, it's been fun to, to hang out with him over the years. And then um, Jason Huggins, one of the founders of Sauce Labs, and also might know him as uh, one of the, you know, the creator of Selenium, um, had the idea to take 
Dan's idea and put it behind a web driver interface. And so they got together and talked about what that might look like, but there wasn't really any code. Uh, there was like a, a Python POC that was very minimal, but there was nothing open source. And then at Sauce Labs, um, a team of us decided this should be a thing. This should be open source. And so we kind of swarmed on it in the initial two, three weeks. So um, I went back and the, the first commit in the Appium repository is actually from Adam Christian, who is um, a good friend from Sauce. And there are some other very early Sauce employees that have initial commits there uh, along with myself. Um, and it was just this kind of almost like a hackathon vibe internal to Sauce Labs to get something usable so that we could, um, you know, open source it and 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 make it something real. And then as time went on, everyone else at Sauce Labs had to kind of go back to their original tasks. But I was fortunate enough to be allowed to continue helping, you know, develop Appium as kind of the a full-time developer, kind of the only one at that time. Um, but that was such a fun way to start an open source project. It, it was very much a, a, a team vibe, a hackathon vibe. And um, it felt kind of open source from the very beginning in that way. And so um, that was kind of my true beginning with open source was, I would say, with the Appium project. And you know, I feel very grateful to have had that experience um, and to have been thrown into that experience experience at my job, right? Um, so that's not a, that's not an experience that you know, many people get to have and I'm incredibly grateful to have been able to be supported by my various employers to work on this over the years. Anyway, very long, long winded <laughs> answer, but. <laughs> no, thank you, Jonathan. I think you gave us a good snippet of the history of Appium and I really appreciate it. Um, Edgars, what about you? How did your journey start? Uh, yeah, so my journey actually also started with Appium. Uh, well, so, so my journey actually started very recently, maybe like last year or before that. And yes, the, the first project basically that I was contributing was indeed Appium. And uh, it kind of, it is very simple, basically what Jonathan already mentioned previously. So the whole thing started with just like, a few contributions here and there. And, and the whole reason I started contributing was, uh, well, because I'm mainly, I work as a test automation QA. And so I was using Appium and Appium Inspector pretty much every day for at least a few years. And uh, over time, I noticed that clearly there, there's room for improvement in the Appium Inspector. And there just came this one point where there was a very minor bug in the Inspector. And I saw that Nobody was fixing it for around a month or two, and I thought, well, might as well. And uh, so uh, it all started with that. And then over time, steadily noticed that, oh, I can improve this. Oh, I can improve the design here and there. And bear in mind, at that point, I had no idea about the internals of uh, how the inspector was actually built. Like, it's built on React and Electron, and I knew nothing about that. So even, even today, I mean, I, I would call myself far from a knowledgeable user of both, but uh, it's been a year and I'm hopefully trying to uh, get it to a better state than it was before. So yeah, and that's pretty much how it's going so far. I think, uh, yeah, I and I'll was... just, I just want to jump in and make a comment on that, if that's okay, Pooja, and just say yeah, that, of course. Um, <laughs> you know, it's been, it has been really fun to see. I mean, I wasn't... Uh, an Electron developer either uh, when I made the project. And it, it's been really fun to see Edgar's, um, you know, become, it feels like more knowledgeable than me about it at this point. And it's also a, uh, I think a good tip for anyone who's running an open source project. Um, here's like a sneaky um, strategy for me, which is leave a couple rough edges so that, you know, somebody who has a high, uh, a high quality bar will come along and, and say, this isn't right, this needs to be fixed, but uh, something you know easy enough for them to fix so that then they get sucked in and you can say, well, now that you've fixed this small thing, what about fixing this slightly bigger thing now that you know what's going on? And then in a couple of months, they're running the entire project for you. So, um, you know, this is just uh, good advice for anyone who wants a successful open source project uh, to rely on on good people like Edgar's who see a problem 
and who who can fix it and who have that that extra ability to kind of go in there. I'm 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 mostly being joking <laughs> about the, uh, the the strategy, but it is fun to see that happen. Can I? Sorry, this is a fun fact. Like, probably I just want to add one thing over here to the strategy, Jonathan. Maybe it's a good strategy which me and Srini very recently have tried it out. I didn't know it is an untold story yeah. with one of the plugins. We never knew how many users are there, so we intentionally left some loop open loops. Then we got to know how many users are there in the repo because things are broken, <laughs> so people come back. So we know okay, we yeah. have actual users to it, right? Uh, yeah. I, just I, <laughs> I think that's an interesting way to leave some loopholes. I'm going to try that out with Selenium probably. I just joke, mm -hmm. but that, that's a lovely snippet. Uh, Kazu, what about you? How is how did how did how does your journey look like in the open source world? Yeah, my my OSS contribution also almost started from Appian, but in my previous company, encouraged employees to contribute OSS world because the previous company have their Ruby committer, Ruby language. So I started finding some OSS product to I can I could contribute. And then I started using Appium for mobile automation. That was almost uh, 10 years ago. So that was uh, not before uh, version one. So still some better, 0. Point something. So, but, and then I need a Ruby client, but the Ruby client was uh, had a very uh, monkey patches. So that was uh, not easy to maintain. So I needed to improve prove some other client for more um, better usage in my case. So, but probably the Ruby client also haven't maintained well at that time. So I started learning Ruby client more first and, and started contributing Ruby client first, and then expand our commitment to their more other drivers and right now is uh, I'm I'm still uh, keep working on the many drivers in the RPM. So while I'm my my work, mm, my main work area was not not JS, but my experience for not JS development is only open source RPM project mostly. So every day I need to learn Node.js, JavaScript thing by getting the review comment by mostly by my current. Thank you for <laughs> reviewing my Node.js implementation. And but yeah, my my journey started for almost ten years ago in a previous company. We were in, encouraged employee to contribute OSS world, and I I learned very much how OSS world was uh, built. Like uh, mostly, many people encur uh keep maintain OS product using their private time. So there, recently we can see many uh company sponsored open source project, but ordinary open source was uh like a Ruby language. Also, mostly many people passionate the development Ruby Ruby language itself, even they don't get any uh, fund. Probably many people like a uh, uh, very like to uh, implement something in Ruby. Want to contribute Ruby language itself. So like I I've learned such motivation and passionate thing from the previous company, and I wanted to give some similar passionate for Appium projects. So that's why one of the reason I've been keep working Appium in my using mostly using my private time. Hopefully, many people will get more attention to their RPM project and like uh, improving documentation also very helpful for us because we we need to keep getting update my knowledge our knowledge for iOS Android every almost every year so not easy to maintain everything so but yeah very mm. Very appreciate to get more uh, interesting in the open source project, like uh, writing even the small one line documentation update. But very appreciate to keep getting interested in open source project and contribute small one line or something. Yeah, this is my story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Michael, would you like to share uh, how you got started? 
Yeah, yeah sure. So basically, it was an accident, as far as I remember, because I started in the company that was doing mobile automation. And also, when I joined the company, the framework that they selected, actually, I was not participating in the framework selection. Somebody did it before me. And this was Appium, of course. And then when I started doing that, I realized that the tool really needs some help because like I tried something, it was, yeah, at that time, like 2014, it was full of bugs, to be honest. And it was really struggling because when I opened the GitHub for the first time and the issues list, it was about like thousand issues that were opened in the project. So yeah, I tried to report the bug, Was this bug was never resolved. Uh, and then I decided, yeah, okay, if not me, then who? <laughs> so, and even though I had previously no experience with no JS or any technology that was used in Appium, except of probably Java, I decided that why not? Like I can just try it and then see if it works. So I tried to actually fix the issue that was bothering me first, because again, like I had everything that needed to that I needed to fix this, like the environment, the device, the test case, the real scenario, I just needed to have the fix and then I can verify it. And I I added this fix and then I realized that I maybe can also help other people that reported issues there with my knowledge, even though I didn't know much at that time, but like I decided, to, I, I try because again, if not me, then who? So, Basically, after I started, I think we were able within a year to reduce the amount of open issues to like 150 or something from 800. Like, of course, not all of them were fixed. Sometimes uh, like they just needed some reply or something. But in general, it was like really fun way of doing this. And also during this time, I learned a lot of new stuff for myself. Because again, like I said, also had no experience with Node.js. I didn't have any experience with Objective-C. I didn't have any experience with Kotlin. I didn't have any experience with like many of tools that were used in Appium. And I basically try, were trying to figure out on my own, like how this works, what can we do with that? And being like perf perfectionist myself, like I always felt that something is missing. Something must be improved. Something is not right. So basically, this led to the fact that I was spending at least like one hour per day, like fixing something, doing something, replying in the issues, in the forum whatsoever. And then it grew up into a habit like that. So I felt like bad if I didn't do anything for the project, at least for one day, May even on vacation, like I felt like guilty <laughs> after like this day I spent without doing anything in Appium. So yeah, and also like, I feel really happy that when I know, because it's also like, it really helps you if you are like, beside your like regular job where like, not every day you see some challenge or some really interesting project. Sometimes it, it might be my maintenance. Sometimes you need to write documentation. Sometimes you need to do some tasks that are not so challenging, so interesting. So on the other side, Appium really helps you actually to keep your feet, right? So you you do you create challenges for yourself basically you need to learn new technology you need to understand how the stuff works you need to communicate with the people get stuff resolved and also you get immediate feedback because for example if you fix a bug you can immediately de deploy it and then get immediate feedback from a person which is probably never the case in the like enterprise world usually if you mm -hmm. fix a bug you get the feedback in like several months sometimes depending on the release cycle and the complexity of the product. So this is really what makes me happy, what keeps me fit. And also the understanding itself that, yeah, you really help people. You see like immediate feedback from them. You really make the world better. And you also can encourage other people to also be committers. You can also say to them, yeah, okay, like you can do this. Like I also started and I did not know anything or did not know much. And then within this time, I learned so many things and also collaborate with so many good people there, like learned so much stuff from them. And I really appreciate this. I really appreciate the time that I spent with all the committers. I really spent, I really appreciate the knowledge that I got from those people and also that I shared with them. This is really nice. I really appreciate it. So I would really also like if more people join that experience because this is really something new. It's completely different from what you can find like in regular enterprise when you do this voluntarily, not for money, just for fun, for challenge. It's completely different feeling. 
Yeah, thank you, Michael. Well I said. think. Well said, Nick. Hold on. I have, I have, sorry, Pooja, I'm keeping, but I actually want to put you on the spot on, on the note of what um, Nicola just said. And, and I know that you've contributed to Appium in the past, Pooja. So I'm curious to hear about your experience of that and what kind of change or changes you made and, um, and, and how it felt. Um, only positive things, obviously, but, you know, we want to try and, uh, you know, uh, convince people that this is a this is a fun group to join. So tell us about your your experience. Uh, yes, definitely. I think um, so. I work for uh, Brastack, and I'm a part of the open source team. So I typically do Selenium, like contribute actively to Selenium. Uh, I came across, and I was trying to triage out something internally, and I came across a potential bug, and then so I was like, okay, how. Where where does the bug lie? I was trying to figure out is it semi selenium? Is it is it in the selenium version? So I typically went to that route. It was someone who was trying to use Appium and were trying to upgrade to Selenium 4 to do certain uh, to get some performance logs from the browser. And then I went snooping around and I'm like, okay, I think. And then I had a detailed look at Appium logs and I really enjoyed them. They were actually really nicely detailed. And I was comparing the two versions and things like that. And I had no idea how Appium does things. So I went and read up the documentation, studied the architecture. I think I really like the documentation you folks have. It's nice and detailed. I was able to walk through a lot of things as to what fits where, because I understand there are a lot of moving parts in the system. And yeah, I started exploring through GitHub. Um, and then I went from a driver to driver to Appium server. I think Appium has 100 repos on GitHub, <laughs> if you go see today. <laughs> <laughs> I went looking around to finally identify that, okay, this is where it pos might be, possibly. Um, and then, again, uh, fork the repo, did some changes locally, uh, try to even, I think, write a test or just tweak a test to see what if what I'm doing makes sense. Um, and that's what I did. And honestly, after that, I felt immensely satisfied. It felt really nice because it was a new project. Um, I was lost and I think Michael was kind enough to give a quick review, also do a quick release. Like it was so quick. I can't even imagine. I just pushed the changes and within a few hours, uh, Michael had preview, merge, uh, CI was all good. And I also had to, like the release. So it was a very, like I really appreciated that. And um, I think even Jonathan left a very encouraging comment after that about uh, wanting to sponsor me. So I think that kind of motivates me further. And I think that was my next question for the rest, for the for this group. And anyone can help answer it is, like I said, it has 100 repos. And for me, I stumbled upon a bug. And then that's how I went through things. Um, but imagine if there's someone wanting to start contributing to Appium or someone's relatively new, someone like me, who just did it first time. Right? Uh, what advice would you give uh, for them to do it more or to even get started? Is there any advice? Because um, I, again, a lot of moving parts uh, with the mobile world and I understand and appreciate how tough it is to keep up with it. Um, but any piece of advice, any ideas how they could get started? I I probably can uh, add the way I started with contribution, uh, Pooja. Like you said, yes, first time you come into the repo, you don't know where to start, where it ends, where what fits in, right? But mm -hmm. uh, a good place that I started to understand more about uh, the entire uh, Appium uh, repo and put things, you know, into one piece of a puzzle is looking at the Appium server logs. That actually told me where each of your calls are getting to, right? Let's say, I, I, let's start off with a very basic thing. Let's not fancy into too many complicated stuff. How does that app launch on your device? You have a set of desired capabilities and you just initiate an Android or iOS driver, right? I think that's how I started to understand looking at the logs, okay, where it goes, what module gets loaded, where is the handover happening? Is it within uh, your Appium server or is it going, how does that interaction typically even happen inside the device, which is completely in a diff it's a different ecosystem, right, for you. So I started looking into the logs and I started following the log traces to figure out where the jump happens and then I put things together to and that's how I figured out how how things actually uh, work okay I think I think that makes sense and on uh, those lines I think this is exactly the question we had in the question answer section and I think we have another question and I'm going to read it out for the folks but it says when you work on open source project in addition to your current job 
aren't you too far from the social world like if you're allocating time are you setting a work a uh, limit for open source like how are you managing both i think that's that's what they're trying to ask i saw i saw nicola typing an answer so maybe you should speak your answer to the rest of us <laughs> yeah it's easier to say rather than type probably a lot, will be a long time maybe so, yeah. Go ahead, yes. Michael. I wanted to say something and add after that. Go ahead. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, one after another. So uh, like if you're too far away from the social world. So basically this is from some perspective is true because this is more like a question of time, personal time management, right? It's sometimes sometimes might be tough, depending also also on your position, on, on your job, actually, on also like if you have a family or not. So basically all your environment. So of course, you cannot like completely dedicate yourself to something like to really one thing, because as then you basically losing time for all the day, all are suffering. So for example, if you dedicate yourself completely to your job, the family will suffer and that this stuff. So, and of course, like I have a family, so it would be unfair from my side to like keep them away and only be busy with the job or open source or whatever. So on my side, I'm trying to dedicate time to everyone so that then everyone is happy and I am happy as well. And probably the most important thing that I am happy in here. So basically then I don't feel kind of guilty for not doing anything, right? So that's why I need to prioritize, right? Like what's is the most important thing? What is the second priority? What is the third priority? And this way you can properly manage your time during the day. So this is also the reason why I, for example, don't have any social network accounts because this is just eating your time. This is basically for me, my experience, it's just wasting my time. Same like messengers. I don't have any accounts in the messengers and I don't really think about creating them because again, it's eating time. I would rather spend my time to something which makes more like fun to something to something that makes me happier. And the same also like spending time with the family. You need to really have like some time dedicated during the day and especially in the weekend that you want to spend with your family. The same with the job. Like you really need to dedicate time to your job and focus only there. Otherwise, you're probably your employer will be not very happy, especially like here in Germany, it's pretty strict. Like it's stated in the contract, basically, how many hours you can spend to something else, like non non working activities, and yeah, of course, like everything in Germany is strictly regu regulated, and you have to take care about it yourself because otherwise you will be just burning if you are doing too much. This is also not acceptable. Sorry, quick time check. It's five minutes to uh, about five minutes to end this session. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically this is the question of prioritization, prioritize things well, and then based on that, based on what's more important to me, dedicate your time. And then next question, yeah, also like allocating time, how managing this, it's the same answer, like learn to manage your time properly. I believe there are many books about this. I don't really remember like exact names, but I read like many of them, I think, and I also like this is what the main conclusion that i did for myself you need to really manage your time wisely because the life is not so long as it might look like so you need to set proper or you need to understand what's important in your life and where you want to spend it and where you don't want it. okay i think uh thank you michael for the advice and also i think a very important life lesson um mm -hmm. in the modern times yeah and i I think since we have five minutes and we have one more question to go, uh, the questions like the Slack channel for Appium is inactive and I don't want to um, DM the maintainers for help every time. Uh, how should new contributors do this? Yeah, so the way that we have our um, kind of support system set up, the Slack channel is primarily for maintainers and committers to collaborate. It's not really a support channel. Um, I would say the two best kind of support channels for if you need help with using Appium would be the Appium forums, which are quite active and where a lot of Appium users help one another, not just getting started, but um, you know, interesting edge cases or use cases for Appium. Uh, but then, you know, we do regularly review the Appium issue tracker. So if you have a question that you think might be a bug, um, 
and you know isn't e easily resolved by reading through the documentation, then create an issue and we can talk about it there. Um, but yeah, so I would say that that the forums first and the issue tracker second, if you're not sure if it's a bug, um, are better options than than DMing the maintainers because yeah, again that that Slack channel is really for us to kind of ping each other as we need when we collaborate um, on on writing code. There's also an Appium channel in the Selenium Slack that has a decent number of users in it that are helping each other there. Um, so that's a community that I would join. Sometimes I answer questions in there uh, as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for the answer. We have three minutes and we have one more question. It says, given that the open source libraries like Selenium, Rest Assured, Appium, and all address different aspects of automation testing, is there an ongoing effort or a vision to bring all of these under a unified framework or like umbrella of projects? Yeah, so I'll say one thought and then anyone else share as well. I mean, there is a tension here between the kind of open source tool philosophy and what users often want or need. Because um, open source being very heavily influenced by kind of Unix philosophy tries to produce single purpose, very focused tools that can be combined with other tools for a solution. So open source projects are often not intended to be end-to-end -end solutions. That's more typically the domain of a paid product or service that ties different things together. Um, so it's, you know, it's unlikely that there will be really good open source full end-to-end -end solutions because it, it kind of goes against some of the grain of how open source generally works. Um, that being said, I think, for example, Selenium and Appium are already unified under the same vision. Uh, our maintainers collaborate together. Uh, there are different rea technical realities to our tools, um, but it's still the web driver vision. It's uh, you know largely compatible between what the different projects are doing, and we're working explicitly together to try and drive towards a more unified future than a more divergent one. And you know, there's a lot of options of what that might look like technically, um, but we're very much you know aligned in terms of our overall vision, at least between these projects. Uh, thank you so much, Jonathan. I think thank you so much, folks. Uh, it was a lovely session, and thank you for being so forthcoming and sharing all the stories and insights and uh, the knowledge you have. Uh, thank you for bringing Appium to life and keeping it alive. Yeah, thanks, everyone, uh, once again, uh, for sharing your experience with us today. Uh, uh, for the attendees, they... Uh, you know, the folks will be available on table in the hangout area for the next 20 minutes. So if you can, uh, if you have more questions, you can take your questions over there. Uh, please read the session on the live stream page when you leave the session. There are hundreds of people across the globe at this uh, event right now. So it's a great networking opportunity. So you can either come to hangout table to connect with them uh, to do a video chat, or probably you can uh, go over to Mingle to, you know, find the attendee and DM them. Right, so which session are you attending next? Check your live stream. Oh, with that, I'm ending this session now. Thank you.